Hey guys, how you going? So today on Beak Out Sport, we are here at Seabus Super Stadium, the home of the Gold Coast Titans. You know we're always going to be the way as we get into the 2023 NRL season predictions. Guys, there is 17 teams to go through the season, so we better get snapping, son. We better get cracking. Let's give you a stadium tour here at Seabus Super Stadium, the best stadium in the world. We're the best team in the world, baby. But let's go give you a stadium tour and let's go do some predictions for the 2023 NRL season, baby. I'm keen. Let's go. This is a place that you do not want to be at the bottom four areas. Obviously, we have come to the bin section of the stadium because it is not great down here. And the first team that I'm going to put off the ranks is going to be the Red Cliff Dolphins in 17th. I just don't think they're going to be great this season. And that's not necessarily going to be on them as a club. I just think they were really forced too quickly into the game. They haven't been able to sign a marquee player, which was the biggest reason why Wayne Bennett was signed because he's only there for a little bit before they do go to Christian Wolf, I believe. Look, Isai Katoa will come into the halves. I do like Isai Katoa. Young, fresh, ready to go. Milfi, gone. See you later. But I will say, I still think the Dolphins are really, really going to struggle this season. So in 16th position, I do have the St. George Illawarra Dragons. I think that usually the common consensus wooden spoon doesn't get it. Uh, you've seen in recent years, you know, the Dragons were, you know, Cowboys were last year and they had a killer year. You know, Tigers, I think the year before that, and they obviously didn't get it with the Bulldogs. And I think it was the Tigers as well in 2020 when the Broncos won it. But I think that the Dragons are still going to really, really struggle. They just don't have... I've been saying for years now, you guys know me, I've been saying for years, rebuild the team, blow the team up in baseball terms, get rid of everyone and start afresh, especially in the organisation, not just the players I'm talking about here, which is not what the Dragons are doing right. I don't believe they should have re-signed Ben Hunt, but it is what it is. So the Dragons, they're going into 16th position. Please rebuild, for the love of God. Like, I'm just, I, I'm begging you. I'm, I, I'm begging you to rebuild. In 15th, we've got the Newcastle Knights, and I'm really surprised that people are saying they're going to be coming around the top eight area. I, I really don't understand where that's, that's coming from. I still think they're going to struggle, especially from the trial form, but in the same sense, don't look too heavily into trials. But I just don't think Callum Pong is a six. Jackson Hastings is fine. You know, he's a do-the-job halfback. That will do his definite job. But overall, their team just isn't... Not a good defensive team for starters. You know, we've known them to not be good defensive for the last probably 10 years, really. They're coming out of a rebuild, and then they just, you know, plateaued, and now they're going backwards, and they're trying to get out of it, but they just can't, really. They just can't. So, unfortunately for the Knights, I do have them down this low. I wish they could do better for their fans, but I just cannot see them having a good season this year, and I think that defensively, they're really going to struggle, and I just don't even think necessarily attacking-wise they're going to be able to get much going either. In 14th, and this may be a surprise to a few of you, but I do still have the West Tigers down here. Yeah, I know it's crazy. Tigers fans think they're making the eight. Some people think they're really going to be bolted for this year, but I still struggle to see their back line. You know, the forward line is fantastic. They've got a Ferrari in the forwards, but what's going on in their backs? You know, the forwards are going to get you to the attack in 10. They're going to push you all the way down the field, but when it actually gets to scoring the tries, I don't see a great deal of try scorers in their team with this setup. I just don't. So, look, I think the Tigers are moving in the right direction. And I, I did say to you guys on my Instagram, like 2025 or TikTok, sorry, 2025, 2026, that's when we start seeing a real chug going, which is exactly what they're trying to do with Benji Marshall and Tim Sheens there, right? They're not necessarily trying to compete this year. But, obviously, Tigers fans are very desperate because it's been 12 years now, and that's not a negative against them. You know, we're all desperate, right? Especially down here. But, unfortunately, I think this will be a more positive year for the Tigers. They're not the spoon but they'll still struggle. They will. Moving out of the bottom four now, and there's still a couple of games you still want to get to this season. You're definitely going to want to watch them at points, but they're not going to be consistent. So hopefully, you're at the stadium, you've bought your ticket here at the ticket office, and they win for you. But they're probably not going to win a great deal. Let's be honest. Now with 13th, we do have the New Zealand Warriors. You're definitely going to be wanting to get to the ticket office this year because they've got a full season at home. It's going to be great for them. However, they just don't have that fantastic of a team still, unfortunately. They are lacking in that spinal area. Wade Egan's okay. Sean Johnson is not the player he used to be. Metcalf was looking great in the preseason. And, and so Tamari Martin, to a point, you could have had both them in the halves. But unfortunately, I think Sean Johnson should move on. I really do. I think he should work with the team, not in the team personally. And fullback, Charles Neville Crockstar, who is... Used to be great, but hasn't really done anything just recently. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the Warriors do play out, but I don't believe they're going to be as consistent as the teams that are above them. So good luck to the Warriors. I hope Warriors fans enjoy the year because obviously it's never usually that great in New Zealand, but you never know. Maybe I could be wrong. You never know. Woo! Now this is where it gets really hard. This is where it gets really hard. In 12th position, I'm actually going to go with the Manly Seagulls here. Now I could have easily put these guys into the top eight. 
I really could have. I could have easily said, you know what, they've still got Cherry Evans. Hopefully Tom Javuvic stays injury free. You know, they've still got a decent back line there. They won the preseason challenge. But I think when it gets to the regular season grind, I don't think they have the forwards to compete. I think the forwards of Manly, you know, they have gone. And unfortunately, it's just not the same oomph that usually you feel when you're thinking, oh, damn, we're going to take on Manly this week. They've got some big boppers coming running at us. I don't think that's the case this time around. And I think that they're really reliant on their spine being healthy. Obviously, Cherry Evans getting older now. Josh Schuster has to really have a big season because he did effectively push Kieran Foran out to the club that I'm at right now. You know, the nine is still very shaky there and Tom Dwevich, I guess, obviously is down with injuries quite frequently. So, Manly are so 50-50. They could come top four, they could come bottom four. It's crazy. In 11th, we do have the Canterbury Bulldogs. Now, Bulldogs fans are going to be surprised because they're like, we're going to win the comp this year, we're going to be top eight this year. Hold on. You know, be patient, man. Be patient. Similar to Tigers fans, but I think Bulldogs fans are a little bit louder and a little bit more aggressive with the way that their tone is in regards to making the eight, yeah? Tigers fans are hopeful. Dogs fans are demanding. And the Dogs, I have been saying for years now, 2023 is a little bit too early. I think 2024 is the year to go. And I've been saying that for a long time now. You guys know that. So they've pieced together this team. They still haven't signed players of need. They've signed players of want. Um, which is great and they'll improve, but there's still big weaknesses in their team and the biggest weakness is obviously the seven. They just need a really solid seven and then they'll be competing for that eight. They'll be in the eight for me and uh, we'll start seeing them really rocket on up there. But I do think it's one year too early. In 10th here, we do have the Canberra Raiders, a very big forward pack and can do anything. Like their back line's actually not too bad. And their spine is not too bad, except for the hooker role. The hooker really has been the, the big role that we've been lacking here, I guess, in Canberra for a few years now. And we thought maybe Tommy Starling was gonna get it. Ricky doesn't necessarily believe that. You know, um, Hodgson has gone to Parramatta and he was in and out with injuries anyway. I don't know, I just feel like there's a bit of a ickiness about the Raiders right now that I just can't seem to really believe in and back in. So, yeah, I'm gonna put them in 10th, and I don't see them making the eight. I don't, I really don't see them making the eight. Finally, this is the biggest call of the entire video. I think, oh, there's another one that involves my team, but which obviously hasn't been said yet, but the biggest call of the entire video, I am gonna be one of the people on the Melbourne Storm downwards train. I do think the Melbourne Storm missed the eight this year. I think there is a very high chance that they could. I think, yes, they've got a great spine, but in the same sense, Puppenhausen's out for the first, what, 10 rounds? Will he come back completely fit and healthy? Not sure. Munster's got a niggling injury. You know, they are one injury away from Harry Grant or Jerome Hughes from completely having a massive derailed season. Or even Munster, like if that really persists. Their back line's nowhere near as good as it has been. Their forward line is all over the shop and has new guys in it, so you don't even know how they're gonna go. I don't know, man. I get a really worrying feeling. I don't believe in the team this year. I don't. Prove me wrong. You know, go and win it. I think last year I had the Storm to win it, and they didn't. A lot of people had them out of the eight last year, but they were never going to do that. But it's just that it's not the same Storm team that I've known. It's not. So I've got my worries, and that's the biggest call, I believe, from this video, that I have the Storm out of the eight. We are into the top eight now, and we are here at the corporate section of Seabus Super. Stadium. So this is a place you damn well want to be. It's still, as I said last time, not the best place to sit at Seba Super Stadium. But it's a great place to sit if you aren't with us in the front line, right? So, gay day, bingo, number eight, Brisbane Broncos. They've made the eight. As much as I don't want to put the Brisbane Broncos here, I do believe this year they will make the top eight. And it's not going to be, I guess, pretty how they're going to make it, but they're going to make it nonetheless. And you can't really complain with it. They've got forwards that haven't really lived up to expectations really, but they've still got decent forwards that can shine, especially obviously Payne Huss, but I'm talking about the guys outside of that. Then you've got the back line and it can work. The Brisbane Broncos back line can work, but I'm not necessarily convinced that it will, especially when Reynolds is obviously getting older now and does go down with an injury quite frequently through the season, so he gets time managed. And unfortunately, the Broncos are heavily, heavily reliant on Adam Reynolds for them to have a successful season. So I do think this is successful. I do think the Broncos fans think they're gonna win the comp this year. That's fine. I can see anyone really from 12 upwards finishing literally anywhere a part of that. In seventh position, I do have a little bit of a drop off here. I do have a bit of a drop off and it is the North Queensland Cowboys. I've still got them in my eight. I see a lot of people saying that they might not actually even make the eight, but I do still have them there. 
last year seems like it was a very one-off year. They beat a lot of the easier teams, didn't beat a lot of the better teams. Obviously, did progress well into the finals. A lot of people had them for last place. I think that this year is going to be a bit more realistic of a year where they're going to come back down to earth a little bit more. However, they've still got good players there. They really do. And, you know, the likes of Reese Robson, Cotter, really breaking out last year. He's got your drink water as well. They've still got a good team. They really do. But I'm not convinced they're going to be as consistent this year. I just don't necessarily believe that they're going to be top four again. But again, like I said, anyone 12 onwards, I can see literally anywhere. It's a really hard ladder predict this year. In sixth, and I know I'm going to get a little bit of hate for this, but I don't give a shit, baby. I'm going to back in my team, the Gold Coast Titans. I'm putting us here because I believe we rectified issues that needed to be rectified. We didn't sign players of want, we signed players of need. We signed Kieran Foran into that sixth role. We need some experience in the halves. That was the biggest problem last year. That was the difference between 2021 and 2022, and that was a huge signing there. We've never really had a great hooker. Sammy Verrills comes into the nine. Look how well they played when they had their first game on the weekend against the Dolphins. It was fantastic, and I know it was against the Dolphins, but it showed the signs of this team getting back to where we thought they would be. You know, they are moving, they are progressing, they are transgressing. People aren't gonna like it, I don't give a shit. I got us at sixth, home final against the Cowboys. <laughs> I love it. In fifth position, just missing out on the top four, I do actually have the Sydney Roosters. Yeah, I do actually have the Sydney Roosters here to miss out on the top four. Very good team. They're still gonna really progress this year. Sam Walker is great, but Kiri is starting to worry me a little bit. He's not what he used to be necessarily. Number nine, I think Brandon Smith is actually a better 13, and I don't really like him a great deal as a hooker. I also don't think he's an 80 minute hooker, right? So there's a couple of negatives there, and I don't, I'm not as hyped to see Brandon Smith at the Roosters as I thought I would be, or as I see a lot of people out there being, right? So I think they're gonna really miss some solidity and consistency with Sammy Verrills in that number nine. They do have Connor Watson who's coming back from an injury, Jake Turbin from the Broncos, but the hooker role is actually concerning for me, uh, even though other people think it's fine. Forwards aren't as good as they once were. Backline, unbelievable, best backline really nearly, you'd probably say in the entire competition. So they can score tries, and maybe their forwards are a little bit of a worry, especially with, with the Crichton news and whatnot. But overall, so I'm in fifth, you know? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm putting a bit of a negative here, but, and I'm putting them in fifth position, so, you know. <laughs> Shows how good the team the Roosters are, eh? The best place to be the front line, the official supporters club of the Gold Coast Titans. That's where you'll find me drumming away, baby. Drumming away there in section 22. It's gonna be a huge season for us down there. Obviously, you guys know me. I'll be in every single game this season, so get around the vlogs. It's gonna be huge. Our first home game against the Storm is in round three, and I'll be right there in this boiling hot sun. Oh my goodness me. But I tell you what, let's get into that top four, baby. This is where the big dogs reside. And in fourth, maybe a surprise to you, but I do have the Paramatta Squeals. I do have the Paramatta Eels here, who a lot of people think are actually gonna be dropping down a little bit more further this season. I just don't believe so. I think that they've actually got a pretty good team still. You know, I don't think they're gonna win the comp. I don't think they're going to, well, there's actually a chance. I, I don't think the comp is easy to read this year. And I think that the, the Eels are being disrespected because they got flogged in the grand final, but I don't know, I think Parramatta is still there, man. I really do, I still feel like Mitchell Moses, obviously we saw in the trials, he looked clinical in that game against the Knights. I think Dylan Brown's gonna have a big year. You know, now they've also got Josh Hodgson, you've got to hope that he obviously can stay injury free, but then again, Reed Marnie was pretty good down there, lost him to the Dogs. Fullback, Clint Gutho, safe as always. They've still got a good team, they do. I feel like people are disrespecting them, so I've got them in the top four. I don't think they win the comp, but there is every chance that they do as well. Now, number three is really difficult because I actually could have had this team in first or third, not second. I've, I've really just solidified that place in second for the team you'll hear in a second. But I've gone with the Cronulla Sharks here, and although I feel like I want to put them into first, there is there is a team there that I just feel like, oh, well, you obviously know the two teams that are left realistically, but the Sharks are a good team. They look nice. They look defensive, which is what Craig Fitzgibbon brought over from the Roosters. They look attacking, which is what Nico Hines brought from Melbourne Storm. They just look like a team. And there are weaknesses in their squad still, which is why I put them down 2-3. But I feel like if any time this team's gonna win in the next couple of years, it's actually this year. Yes, I know in 2022, they're more were like the beating of the, the, the scrubs and not beating the good team. But I just feel like that with that year behind their belt, I think they're gonna be good this year. I think they're gonna be really good, the Sharkies. Number two, and I was not moving this spot. I was actually gonna put the Sharks in third or first, or the team that's in first or in third. I was never moving the Penrith Panthers from number two. I think they're still great. I know people look at the game against St. Helens, which is effectively a trial game for us, right? I know people want to be like, oh, St. Super League's better than NRL now. 
It showed there wasn't as much of a gap, but there is still a season long grind. As I said on that post on Clarkie's page, there is still a gap. We're not gonna get into that though, right? We're gonna get into the Panthers, who are still a very good damn well team. They are gonna lose up big Cottesau. They are going to lose Viliami Kikau, and Cottesau's a big loss there. But, they're still a Cleary, Luai, Dylan Edwards. You know, hopefully Sonny Luke comes out at number nine. Yeah, but they've got Isaiah Yo, Liam Martin, James Richard Harris, Moses Leota, Stephen Cryan still, Brian Toto, Sonny Turova now comes onto the wing for Talame. It's a good damn well team. Shut your mouth. Stop putting them out of the top four. It's ridiculous. Stop putting them out of the top four just because you want somebody else to do it. I want somebody else to do it. But I'm not silly. I'm not silly. Oh, I can be silly summertime. I can be silly summertime, but not today. Not today. And in number one, I do have the South Sydney Rabbitohs. So although I might get a little bit of hate for how low I put the doggies and a bit of hate for how high I put the Titans, well, guess what? It equals out with this fan base, baby, because they've got a lot of Rabbitohs fans, eh? I do think the Rabbitohs are going to be good this year. I think Latrell Mitchell's great. I think uh, Ilias is in for a really big year. I thought he, well, that was his first year last year, worked his way in well. Then obviously has that grease uh, cap now to his name. Plus, you know, he was a really instrumental figure for the Rabbitohs coming into the back end of last year. I think they'll be better. I am not convinced in Jason Demetrio, though. That's still basically Wayne Bennett's team, right? However, this is the year to prove it. And if he's good enough, they come first. If he's not good enough, 4 5. Right? But I'm willing to back in that Jason Demetrio is the right man for the job, takes over Bennett well, and uh, I think they've got a really, really nice team in all aspects of the park. Campbell Grain back line, Sean Mitchell in back line, Cody Walker, Ilias, Damo Cook has to have a big year, Cameron Murray, you know, everywhere you go, Colin Matangi, everywhere you go, everywhere you go, he's a good, great player in that team. So I'm taking the Rabbitohs in numero. Oh no. Anyway guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed. Obviously smack that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new around here. Massive, massive year incoming. I tell you what, I'm really, really excited for this season's NRL. I think it's going to be one of the closest to date and I'm going to be at every single Titans game, home or away, which is going to be fantastic. But don't forget as well, we stream every single game here on the channel that I'm not at. But we do actually have a friend of mine who's going to be jumping on, or maybe we might even get a couple of people jumping on when I'm actually at Titans games and whatnot, right? I appreciate you as always, guys. Get ready for a big year, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye. See you.